This hey, conference Dr. Doug. will now be recorded. Hey, everybody. This is uh, Dr. Doug Smith. It's uh, one o'clock on a Tuesday, so it is time for our Monday through Thursday one o'clock podcast. This is the podcast where you will hear the science uh, behind what is um, uh, what is going on with this opioid crisis. And we, we, we spent several days leading up to today. OK, we spent several days leading up to today and you guys saw the 1988 uh, study done by Dashiari in Italy. That is the study that everybody is is quoting as proof that you guys are, are drug addicts, you're opioid addicts, that there was a surge in dopamine in the reward centers of the brain. Um, and then the, the, they completely ignore the later studies, the 2009 study by Daglish and the 2014 study by Watson, uh, both of which were superior studies. They used the superior technique of uh, what's called a PET scan, positron emission tomography. It's just a better technology. Okay, they were more modern, better technology, better studies. And they were done on humans, not rats. And the later studies that were done with humans showed no surge in brain dopamine. Okay, and so what we're looking at today is uh, we're, we're going to begin with uh, Dr. Nora Volkow, okay? Um, and this is from the uh, uh, article that, that she authored in 2016 uh, in the New England Journal of Medicine. Now, the New England Journal of Medicine, that's the, uh, that's, that's, that's the big boy. That's the Bible of, uh, of medicine. Uh, and uh, it was called uh, Neurobiologic Advances from the Brain Disease Model of Addiction. Again, Brain Disease Model of Addiction. And let me read you a quote from her article, and I quote Dr. Nora Volkow from 2016. Remember, 2016, okay, the, Dag the Dago study was 2009, the Watson study was 2014, and this quote is from 2016, and I quote, all known addictive drugs activate reward regions in the brain by causing sharp increases in the release of dopamine, end of quote. Now, this is really, really interesting. OK, no mention of the Daglish study, no mention of the Watson study. OK, but look very closely. OK, she's protecting herself here. OK, she's not mentioning opioids by name. OK, all known addictive drugs activate reward regions in the brain by causing sharp increases in the release of dopamine. I mean, this is just as slimy as you get. OK, uh, and, and again, this is Dr. Nora Volkow. She's executive director of NIDA, National Institute for Drug Abuse. This is the person who's leading the country in the opioid crisis. Okay. And basically what she's saying here is my favorite color is plaid. Okay. All known addictive drugs activate reward regions in the brain by causing sharp increases in the release of dopamine. And she's silent on the issue of the, uh, of the opioids. Okay. Now, drop down to, to the next uh, uh person okay this is dr inglet olson okay dr olson must not have gotten the memo about hey be sneaky when you when you make a quote be sneaky okay and and again dr inglet olson this is one of the people leading the country out of the opioid crisis she is the director for the center of substance abuse treatment at samsa this is a big government institution samsa okay um samsa is part of hhs OK, and that's Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. This is a huge organization. And this is Dr. Inglet Olson, the director. OK, this is from a book that she co-wrote in, in 2019. Again, the Dagla study was in 2009. The Watson study was in 2014. This quotes from, from uh, 2019. And I quote Dr. Inglet Olson, quote, deep in the reward center of the brain was someone with addiction and opioid causes at least at first, an enormous release of the neurotransmitter dopamine. So here's Dr. Inglet Olson, director of the Center for Substance Abuse Treatment at SAMHSA, saying in, in, in her book that deep in the reward center, the reward center is the brain, opioids cause a surge in dopamine. That's what she's saying here. In the reward centers of the brain, opioids cause a surge in dopamine. Okay. Uh, and again, Okay, no mention of the 2009 Daglas study, no mention of the 2014 Watson study. Okay, as a physician, knowing what I now know, I understand these people are lying to me. I'm being lied to. Okay, they're trying to manipulate my thinking. 
Okay, they're not telling me the truth. Okay, now when I read this, okay, I now know she knows the truth. Let, let, let me read this again. Deep in the reward center of the brain with someone with addiction and opioid causes, at least at first. That's a hedge. That's how you hedge bets. At least at first. Okay, that's how she's addressing the 2009 Dagla study and the 2014 Watson study. She's saying, oh, at least at first, but, you know, we didn't see it. Okay, it's there. You just have to trust us. It was there. We know it was there. Okay, we're psychiatrists. We know it was there. And both of these are psychiatrists, by the way. We, we're, we're psychiatrists. We know it was there. We don't need studies to prove it. We just know it. We're smart enough to know. Okay. And no, this is not how science is done. Okay. And you make, can't make statements like at least at first unless you got a study to back it up. And they're, they don't have a study. There's no study that showed that there was a surge in dopamine and that it then went away. There, there's no study to show that. If you're going to make statements like that, you got to do studies to, to prove it. That's how science works. Okay, so this is, to me, professional dishonesty. That's what this is. Okay, and it wouldn't be so bad, except we're talking about almost 4 million people are dead. Okay, and this is, this is, this is caught up in part of the reason that this opioid crisis happened, is that the experts, the people who were trusted, Okay, this is Dr. Uh, uh, Nora Volkow at NIDA and Dr. England Ol Olson at SAMHSA. This is NIDA and SAMHSA. These are the leaders. Dr. Olson is the one that spoke to Congress. These are the leaders. These aren't just people giving their opinion. Okay, these are people who are paid to, to, be, for, to, to be the experts. And here are the experts manipulating the science. And that's how 4 million people have died. And that's how millions of people have ended up genetically damaged, is that the experts have not been truthful. Okay, so we're going to hold here today. Okay, uh, please, everybody, take a look at, at, at what we just went over. Okay, read it. If you have any questions, send me an email, send me a text. I'm, I'm, I'm always here. Okay, I'm, I'm always appreciative to get your emails and texts. I'm always thankful. OK, if you have any questions, send them to me. Uh, we're going to hold here for today. Again, please like and subscribe us. Post this uh, podcast on your social media and everybody else's social media. By the way, you know, the big news is we got a lawyer now for our, our um, uh, although I call it class action lawsuit. The lawyer pointed out it's actually technically mass tort lawsuit. But we got a, we got a lawyer. So we're going to be moving forward with with uh, the process of getting our first lawsuits filed. Um, which is um, what we always promised and said we would do once we got the DNA testing done. Um, uh, the missing piece that we, we uh, added was the uh, uh, FDA 3500, which allows our people to document the signature disease, a disease that our people experience when they attempt to stop taking you. So we're going to hold here for today. My name is Dr. Doug Smith, and we will see everybody tomorrow. Thanks. Bye -bye.